I've got Pat Collins with me today. He is the executive member of the Birmingham Trades Council and he's also the secretary of the RMT union, the engineering branch in Birmingham. So I'm going to raise with him the issues his union particularly and his uh, members face uh, while working in the public transport. Uh, Pat, thank you for joining us today to discuss the health and safety during the corona crisis. And as the country returns to work following the lockdown, you are on the executive of the Birmingham Trades Council and a member of RMT, whose workers are one of the frontline workers in the health crisis we are facing today. Uh, some of the top transport workers have lost their lives. Can I begin by asking you why and how does the corona crisis impact those working in the public transport sector? Well, what you've got to remember is that public transport workers have a major contact with the public as a whole. Um, yeah, it's one of the industries, a bit like, you know, unlike like where you've got National Health Service, doctors and nurses are dealing direct with people who they know that are ill. Public transport workers are coming across people and dealing with people crowded situations and one-to-one -one situations and without knowing whether a person has got the virus or not. And as a result, you know, obviously public transport is a means of transmitting the disease because you're getting mass communica um, communication of member people, you know, gathered in one space. And it becomes like effectively a breeding ground for the virus because it's easy, it's easy to pass because people are very close together on public transport, particularly on um, commuter services uh, where you get, you know, um, where there isn't enough space for everybody and everybody is um, crammed in as they were prior to the, the lockdown. As the country attempts to return to work, what challenges are faced by those working in the transport sector? Well, clearly the problems faced is that as people return to work, we're obviously going to see an upsurge in the use of public transport. Although the government is saying don't use public transport, for some people it's the only means of getting to and from their means of work. And probably the most, some of the most efficient means of getting to work. So obviously what we have to face there is, yeah, to ensure that social distancing, which means reducing the number of people on trains and on buses and keeping it as low as possible to yeah, and ensure that uh, social distancing is maintained and that people have got, you know, where necessary, are protected and the, uh, you know, the appropriate risk assessments are in place to ensure the safety of the staff and the safety of the traveling public i mean just today we've had an issue where told that people traveling on eurostar are compelled to wear masks but yet they you know yet somebody arrives at st pancras wearing a mask can get off and then venture onto any other form of public transport without any protection whatsoever are your members given any PPE equipment? Um, as far as I'm aware they are. Um, I haven't had any direct reports that people haven't got it. You know, clearly, I mean, I, uh, my members, particularly my members who I deal with within Network Rail, have all been given the appropriate PPE where they need to, because um, for some of them, particularly some of the jobs they do, the social distancing, is a problem, so they need the appropriate PPE, and they have been given it. Do you think that the Boris administration has given enough consideration to these challenges? No, I mean clearly, yeah. I mean, he, yeah, he told, yeah. I mean, what was happening is that the rail industry, we were in contact with the rail industry through a forum which was known as the Rail Industry. Coronavirus Forum, which was established at the start of this pandemic, was a, like, a means where the industry and the unions would sit down together, all the rail unions, to discuss how the 
um, how the transport, in particular the railways, would run. And clearly, it was an intention to obviously start increasing passenger services from today. But obviously, Boris Johnson's um, speech last week sort of indicated people to start going to work last week. And what we did see last week was um, an upsurge of people, particularly on London Underground. Although, yeah, the West Midlands has still been um, fairly quiet. So, so what, what is the view of your union to the return to work? Is it too soon? Has enough safeguards been provided to ensure safety for frontline workers like your members in the RMT? No, obviously not, because when we believe that, yeah, we were in the process of um, trying to ensure that any increase in services was going to be done safe, safely uh, with the appropriate level of protection for the staff and the travelling public. But obviously, when the government jumped the gun, that you know left um, left workers vulnerable. Which you know left the union with the only option of saying to members that you know if you're you're put in a situation where you feel vulnerable and you have the right under Section 44 of the 1996 Employment Rights Act to withdraw to a place of safety. So, so what position has your union taken and how does it hope to ensure its members' safety and those of the public using the services your members provide? Well, I mean, we've taken um, a number of measures. I mean, we once it was announced there was going to be an increase in services, we made sure that all our staff, like our staff representatives, our union representatives, and our health and safety representatives, all got involved in ensuring that you know, anything that they do was properly risk assessed and that they had the appropriate equipment. And if they didn't have the appropriate equipment, not to continue with it. Uh, Pat, I'm going to put you a couple of questions which have arisen as a result of my conversations with some of the people working in the transport sector. Uh, the, f the first of all, I want to know if an employee thinks that they can do their job from home and the employer insists they come to the workplace, what rights the employee has and what can the person do to enforce that right? Well, it would, it would all depend upon the nature of the work that they were undertaking, you think. I mean, clearly, if the work can be done from home, government guidelines say it should be done from home. But an employer forces somebody to come to work, and if that employee doesn't feel they should be going to work. They should be talking to their union about the matter. I mean, clearly, because I mean, yeah, within the industry, we have, um, you yeah, know, quite a few layers of representation levels, and anybody that feels that they're being threatened should talk to their rep. Uh, you know, clearly, it's not acceptable that somebody should be forced to come to work if it is possible for them, in accordance with the guidelines, to work from home. Can the employee be forced to take annual leave while being furloughed? I mean, we had an argument at the start saying that, yeah, we didn't believe they could, but I believe now there is, um, there is a test case. I read something last week saying that they can be forced to take annual leave while they've been furloughed. But depending on if somebody's been furloughed and they're only getting 80% pay, then obviously if they take annual leave, they have to pay they have to receive the 100% pay. But where we've had staff that have been furloughed, particularly within train operating companies, uh, some network rail staff and other train operating companies, we've, got, we've come to an agreement with the employer that those staff will receive their full uh, basic wage, 100%. They will not you know, get a reduction. But yeah, clearly if there's an annual leave, then annual leave is different because the payment's different because that would take into account their average earnings possibly over the past 12 months. Well, thank you very much, Pat. And I think you will be joining the Birmingham Trades Council on Thursday the yeah. uh, 21st, is it? Uh, where you'll be speaking about some of these issues and we'll be answering people's questions. So we look forward to seeing you then. Okay, uh, then. no problem.